right, here we are, back chat studios. Uh, we're on a weekend, actually working on a weekend today. <laughs> yeah, Dan. how would you um, be? Yeah, 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 very good. Um, back chat with <laughs> with the man that sits in front of me, powered by Fleet Network. Michael Braun joins us today. G'day, Brawny. Brawny. G'day, Jens. How are we? Very good. How you going, mate? Well, I'm busy. That's why we're working on weekends, yeah, aren't we? Correct. So I'm a, I'm a busy man during the week, mate. So uh, been bloody. Yeah. We've been chasing Brawny for years. Yeah. We finally got him on. Um, now, Brawny, I know you're a big back chat fan, but um, just in case you don't know, we ask the same question to every guest we ever have on here. Yep. All right. And now I know you're a premiership player. I know you play over 200 games for the West Coast Eagles. You're a bit of a you know a bit of a cult figure down there at the West Coast. You're a Glendening Allen medalist. Um, you're a rising star nominee. You've done lots of things on the footy field, mm -hmm. but I want to know your greatest sporting achievement. Not on the football field. We have lots of superstars come through the podcast yeah. here and they're all great at their selected sports. I mean, that's what we want to chat about. But to start the podcast, I want to know what you've done not in the footy world, mate. Yeah, well, I've just, I'm just reading the uh, the badge down here for, <laughs> yeah. for this. It's the uh, final 12s or something like that. Yeah, yeah so. Um, Five for 16, under 12s. I do, I do know this question and uh, I, I've, I've seen a few few answers and I've been thinking about my greatest achievement. Oh, wow. He's come I, prepared. I, I, I right. have. And, <laughs> and, and it's only just happened recently too. <laughs> oh, so, um, you know, the last, say, five years, I've been putting together a um, an indoor cricket side. Yes. Uh, and uh, we've been in A division the entire time. We've got, uh, I'm not a cricketers, you know, whatever. Um, so I've got all the uh, A-grade cricketers from Wanneroo and Scarborough. All come to, They're all older now, but they're all in their time. They were good cricketers. Um, so we're on the top of the ladder for pretty much the last three or four years and never won the grand final. Got relegated last year to B division. <laughs> That's all right. Bring home the bacon. Okay, yeah. so I, I think it's probably you know the div, uh, two. div two indoor cricket six aside. What do you do? What's what do you bring to the table? I'm a rule. You're a hustler. Right? I'm, I'm a hustler. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I think now they, they call me the Andy Bickle. You know, the real nice guy. <laughs> 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 like, because all these because all, all these blokes are you know batsmen or or, or um, uh, pace uh, bowlers. You know, I just have a bit of a go, just a bit of a competitive yeah, nice. beast. Um, but no, I, I try and know nothing about cricket. I'm the captain of the side. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't know anything about it. But they have a laugh. And so, yeah, I reckon um, Div 2 uh, premieres. premieres for uh, you know, get a trophy. Cricket. get a trophy. Yeah, I, I, and, you know, and even the uh, even the medallions are, like, not even worth taking home that day. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you play? At Seamus Sports Seamus in Belcata. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, I used to yeah. play as well. Shout yeah. out yeah, it's good fun. It, it is good fun. It's hard to win grand finals in indoor cricket because you have one bad he, know, he knows mate yeah, well, yeah I know. I've lost three in a row or something like that so <laughs> it's, but it, what it is it's it's old school there's only fans on the roof there's no yeah. air con and we're only because the cricketers um, obviously play cricket on you know they um, don't play A grade anymore but they only they play during um, the summer so um, you know they're playing cr outdoor cricket and indoor and it's hard to combine the both because you go for those shots yeah. and you get caught or get run out so that, it's hard to kind of um, restrict yourself. You get to, indoor cricket is a specific kind of shot selection and all that. Um, we're just going back net. It's just, it's, there's no yeah. sides. Sevens just all day. Back net all day. We yeah. get caught, you know, but we've got good bowlers. But we probably don't play. We're just here for a laugh and, you know, the, the lateral movement and, you know, the getting around the indoor court these days, it's hard. So yeah. um, I'm not too sure I'm going to go back this year. Couple well, of, oh, wow. Well, let's just keep talking about indoor cricket for a long time. Wow. Uh, I love it. The, um, you got a cricket highlight, dude? No, no, I was going to say. What's your indoor cricket to highlight? Oh, I reckon you can't bowl spin it. You can't bowl spin it. No, it's like I do like quick offies. When, quick offies. Yeah, and I was keeper. I used to be keeper. No, and, and there's that, like not much space between. The no, and, and if you get a good keeper in your cricket, they are worth yeah, the weight in gold. I don't. I actually feel it as a, a slip. Oh, so you don't keep. You just don't you just keep. real short stump yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yep. It works well. But when you slide on the indoor cricket pitch, right, and you get a graze, cool. it gets infected because it's like disgustingly it's old, like sweaty. Carpets from like 50 years. Are you done? Yeah. Yeah. Back chat. <laughs> powered, by, powered by Fleet Network. Welcome to the Indoor Cricket Podcast with Michael Broad. Now, Broadie, uh, another one we've been throwing in here is your first car. Fleet Network, Novated Leasing Specialist here in Perth. Go and check them out. Uh, Gary Gibbertson, Frankie Agostino. Mm. What was your first car? Well, this is a bit of a cold story, Scoey. That okay. um, when oh. I first when I first came over uh, to to West Coast, um, we got, I got I got drafted in '96 uh, um, with Josh Wooden, Nick Stone, Michael Gardner, um, and uh, um, can't remember the other bloke's name. That's rude of me, but I do know I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this question, Scoey. But okay. um, 
So my 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 uh, my first was a was a Nissan Pulsar um, mm. LX. Now that the story goes, it was a, it was a sedan. It wasn't the hatchback that the Eagles were sponsored by Nissan back in the day, yes. back in ninety five ninety six. Color. Uh, white, mm. white, and it was uh, the the new Butte one. And Josh Wooden, because he got drafted ahead of me. Or, uh, um, I think it was like pick twenty four. Pick twenty four, Josh. Was he? Well done. You'll there. pick fifty three. Yeah, nice. Yes. Um, he um he got the first one that was already at the footy club, and it was a hatchback, and it was at the old one because it'd been passed down to <laughs> all the new um recruits. So the, I, mine was a brand spanker, um Alex <laughs> sedan, like it was you know ten times better than everyone else's. But Chetty Morrison, who I used to live with back in the day, um. You know, obviously they reckon I was a tight ass, and we used to we used to buy long lasting milk because we used to go through milk, and then they always reckon that um, I always have the windows uh, down for no air con, and then when I go down hill, put the car in neutral to save fucking petrol <laughs> and all this. So the the, the the Alex, the Nissan Pulsar Alex, is is uh, is a bit of a cult figure down at uh, West Coast wow. in, the, in the mid nineties. And you've rolled in at pick fifty three and gone, yeah, no yeah, worries, give us the keys yeah, of the yeah, one, thanks. Like this and this, yeah, it was brilliant. So brilliant. you're you're a Chuka boy, you're a Victorian. Yes, country Victoria. Yep. Yeah. So what's what's life like growing up for for Brawny? It was um, obviously I, we. I was born in Melbourne and uh, raised in Melbourne. Um, that's how I knew Chad Morrison. So Chad and I played for the same junior footy club. Went to the same primary school in Melbourne together, and then I moved to the country when I was twelve. So it's only two and a half hours north of um, of Melbourne. So Chuka on the on the Murray River. Um, and grew up in a pub. So I've had a a, a good, you know. Um, lifestyle upbringing like it's not you know not a piss head by any stretch but I, I don't mind getting behind the uh, beyond a, a, a um the counter or the bar and pouring a beer and were you pouring pots at pouring pots yeah i was pouring pots at about 15 yeah working <laughs> the bottle shop and, and all that and uh you know i was knocking a few you know jds and but I, from, from that this is a <laughs> going off kilt here again Love um it. is uh, i used to you know Take a you know like those little one fifty kind of flasks and all that. Oh, about yeah. the bottle shop and all that, and the dark spirits. And we used to go with all my mates and swig them down the down the uh, on the Murray River and get a fire. You know, fifteen. That's what you do. Um, well, that's what we used to do anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 I've had a couple of bad experiences on the dark spirits. So I haven't. I don't drink bourbon, JD, Southern Comfort because of all those um, bad. Yeah. Memories of you know knocking off the old 150 you know flasks. Used to steal yeah. them from mum and dad. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to. Used to borrow them. <laughs> <laughs> I never employ, used to employ a bonus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, exactly. I didn't get paid for it, so there was. It's illegal to a, buy it. So yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. That's a good so, point. <clears throat> so I, I'm a vodka man. So I don't drink anything else by vodka anymore. <laughs> right. vodka so I hate man. dark spirits. <laughs> Did you play a lot of sport growing up? Played a bit of sport, mate. Yeah. So I played um, uh, cricket and footy. Um, and then obviously with the little athletics, um, played a lot of little athletics. I did a little, 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 little athletics with, uh, Chad Morrison, but he always used to be the, um, the sprinter. I was a hurdler. He was the long jumper. I was the, um, triple jumper. Um, I was a shot putter. He was the discus, you know, but he used to win everything. Like Chad, Chad was a very good athlete and, uh, it was always, I was kind of always in his shadow. He was always the fast one and all that, but we were great mates. So. Um, you know, and then obviously when I went to the country, I lost kind of contact with him, but followed his career, um, you know, through the papers and like, because he was touted as the next Gary Lyon. He was, you know, very good football. Me and him used to win best and fairest, um, runner up and, you know, go in, in the juniors, you know, from midgets right through to you know, under 12s. So, um, did he get drafted to the West Coast or Collingwood He, he was a, he was a, a prelim pick. So he was a priority pick, um, yeah. back in 95, right. he was still at school. So and he he got he got drafted but stayed in Victoria and then come over. He he was him and Cuzzy were playing footy in '96. Where yeah. I, I come over at the end of '96. Because um, he finished his career at Collingwood. Yes, he did. Yeah. What was that like for you, rocking up at a footy club, having a, a mate or a long lost mate? Oh, or... It was it was brilliant. So when I first when I first got drafted, he was the first person to call me. He huh. goes, "Oh, you you coming to West Coast?" Were you watching um, the draft? I, I no, I didn't watch the '96 draft. I watched the '95 draft. I didn't get drafted in in '95, and it kind of got a little bit upset. And so then the next year uh, in '96, I said to Dad, um, "If I get drafted, come and get me." Because I was working. Uh, I was on just 18 and turning 19 the, the year after uh, early March. And Dad rang me, and I was working on a like a, a factory there just through Dad's just to keep myself busy. And he goes, oh, you got drafted by West Coast. And I went, wow. Like, I, I didn't care where I went. Didn't know much about West Coast, but I was in the country. So I had to move regardless of where I was going. But, you know, I went down to the Collingwood um, uh, camp for two days and I was a Collingwood supporter. Hence why Chad Morrison went to Collingwood. 
And then I played a couple of games for Carlton um, when I was playing for the Pioneers, just the, the top up 18 year olds. And then West Coast were kind of, you know, we spoke once, um, but didn't didn't know much about it. And um, I rocked up the training with a very, I think it was um, November 1, rocked up the train and then Chad Morrison um, was the first person that came and greeted me, um, took me under his wing. Um, it was it was very, very comforting. The fact that I haven't seen him since I was 12, because I'd moved to the country and then I was 18. So that's six years. Yeah, I've, I've seen his development and all that and watched him closely. And I said, you couldn't believe, you know, two five-year-olds playing junior footy together and they ended up at the yeah. elite level was was, <laughs> it was fantastic. Yeah. So not Facebook friends or anything, you know, keeping in touch. No, it, was, it wasn't so even back just, there. We, we, we were yeah, still exactly. on the brick and the, uh, you know, the, the, the battery with the mobile phone back there. <laughs> 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 I've, I've just actually two, remembered two, two. you and I have been at a party together. So, like, literally just Do, had this. Brawny probably doesn't remember. Yeah, no. Uh, no, it was <laughs> Chad Morris, one of my good mates at the time, his sister – was dating Chad Morrison in Kingsley. They had a house. Yeah, right. And you were. See, we're going back twenty five yeah. years, I reckon. Yeah, Welcome long, back to the, the long back to our <laughs> podcast, indoor <laughs> cricketing podcast, and random fucking parties that Dan's been to. The bottom floor was that. Yeah, uh, I don't you, remember much. I just. Like, I'm glad you don't remember much because that makes two of us. I think I was about 14. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. That's a great story. Um, <laughs> Michael, Michael, Michael Gardner was pick one in that year. Yes, he was. He, he, he number was one draft pick. number one draft pick. You're in. What's what's Gardy like? You know, I, I never played with him. He left the year that I came to the footy club. What was he like as a as a young guy growing up within your draft class? It, it was it was good. I said we we all spent time. Like, there was back in the in the Subaco days when we had our um, the officers at Subaco Oval, and. The new recruiters, we used to work for the footy commission and, and spend some time um, with the footy commission, going out and doing um, clinics. And it's it's a bit more um, professional now. But we used to go out there and, um, you know, the eagle eye that comes out, it's the magazine. Um, the, the magazine for the West Coast. We used to go upstairs and have all different um, sections to put in the, the big envelopes of all the packs to send out. And we'd spend pretty much six hours a day licking <laughs> – the envelopes, me, Gardy, Wirra, and, and but we used to we used to do it. Uh, Nick Stone was there, Josh Wooden, uh, and we always to be in the same room for pretty much every day. They, the had, game you, they had you working. They had us working, and, but the, th the funny thing is that Wirra, Wirra, um, his phone bill back in the day, like I'm talking '97, his phone bill was four five hundred bucks, and they had to take the phone off Wirra because he spent half his time. Talking on the phone to all his all his friends and cousins and brothers and so they they, they took had to take the phone off him because the West Coast were paying for all that at the stage so he got barred in it and we always used to you know bag each other about we, we go for toilet breaks and don't 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 come back for an hour and everyone's still licking you know putting stickers and putting um, magnets in this pack to send out to all the junior members of the, of the West Coast and that was a good time and we spent a lot of time together as. Those five draftees. Guardy, Guardy notoriously didn't know anyone's name. He used to go around calling folks mate and horse. Yeah, and yeah. Old, old mate. Probably, but it had nothing's changed. <laughs> she doesn't know my name. Known him for twenty five years. <laughs> uh, that's very good. So your debut in ninety seven. So you drafted in ninety six. Debut first year round eleven St Kilda. Yep, know it well. Remember it? Yes. Just yes. sit on the bench for a while. Is straight on. Um, no, straight on. Like, but that, I was. I keep saying back in the day because it's. it's been it is back in the day. Yeah. Don't worry, mate. It's, it's fucking back it's in the back day. It's way. Well, uh, I reckon it's almost thirty, mate. Yeah, no, I, I don't want to even get in there. <laughs> I've been out of the game longer than I was in it. That's scary. <laughs> yeah. that. Um, so I knew I was playing uh, on um, Nathan Burke. So Mick Mulder has had a, a had a real way with um, throwing the young kids to the wolves immediately to, to impact, and, and it's. May have been a bit daunting, but that's what carved my career to being able to work hard. Um, because I was never the fastest kid, never the the, the tallest kid, um, but my work ethic was what I I kind of held in uh, high high esteem. You know, I had to work hard, used to practice my skills because I needed to be elite at something. And um, so my my foot skills, I, I you know I was fairly skillful in that area and, and my work rate was was another one. And so Nathan Burke, so for the first seven or eight games of the 97 season, I played on best and fairest winners, Brownlow medal winners, um, you know, uh, captains of the footy club, you know, Greg Williams, Paul Kelly, Mark Bickley, you know, um, Gary Hocking. You know, this is my first wow. first seven games. Um, you know, Braden Lyle was a captain of Port back in the back then. Um and so Nathan Burke was was one of the, you know, one of the all time greats, you know, um and Played in the Subaco Oval. It was a bit wet, and um, I, I've got on the ground following him around. And then um, Ashley McIntosh, Millie, was kicking out from fullback, and I've kind of come in there and grabbed the, my first touch straight from the fullback. 
And I don't know what happened. I got real nervous and I played on for some reason. I just panicked and um, I played on and I'm running out of the back line um, against St Kilda and big Stewie Lowe's got hands out here. I went to kick it and he's kind of pushed me in the side and I've fucked the kick up. <laughs> it's hit the inside of me boot and it was just, that's my first touch. That's my memory. That's why oh, I know it so well. Cause like, did, it, like a did, it, did it go back for a goal? No, no, it didn't. Um, the Millie come out of full back. So we cleaned it up, but it was just my first touch. It, it, it went, it went left, left field here uh, <laughs> about four or five meters. Um, yeah. So that was, um, my first, uh, initiation of AFL. You were wearing the number 10 that day? 38. So you were 38 and then you 38. moved to 10. Yeah. I moved to 10 the next year and Dom Pike Off retired. Pikey. So I rang up, I rang up Dom Pike obviously cause I, I was always traditional as so I always, um, respected where I was going and, and, and who I'm talking to and all that. So I rang Dom Pike up and said, look, I would really like to, to wear your number, even though he wasn't wearing it that, um, the next year, uh, I said, do, do you mind if I, if I take your jumper? Um, I want a number five, but see, I, I'm, I'm a real superstition, um, superstitious kind of person. So no, I was born on the 24th, Darren Mullane, my favorite uh, player uh, from Collingwood. He wore number 42. So when I first came to the footy club, um, 42 was taken by Chad. Um, number five was taken by Andy Lovell. Chad, Chad went from 42 to five when, when that happened. And cause five was my favorite number because of Nathan Buckley. I wore number five at Benigo Pioneers. Um, and then 24 was taken because I think Wush wore that number. Yes. I think Wush wore that number. And then Chatty Rintoul come and he took 42. So the best, next best number uh, from, from five was 10. I don't know how I got to 10, but 10 <laughs> was it. So I chose 10 and that, and that's how I become, um, um, number 10. I remember if that um, makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, not no, none at all. <laughs> um, now, it does in my mind. <laughs> you mentioned Darren Malone. Yep. So I, you just prompted a memory of mine, um, and I, I know you used to do you used to do this with all the interstate boys. You'd get them around um, as early as you could for a bit of a dinner at your house. Yep. Anyway, we had dinner, great dinner, um, great spread, and just get to know us. And then I'm I'm almost certain we either watched your highlights from the 2006 grand final, or I don't think we watched that. <laughs> no, no, no. But it, would, it would have been some sort I of think, highlight. Of I me. think we watched. No, I think that we Darren watched Darren Malone's, Malone's video. video. Yeah. We all sat there. 2007 this is probably it could have been 2006 could have been December 2006 yeah. all sat down interstate draft days there was four of us and there, was we an, wa- there was an VH, VH, it was VHS. a fucking tape mate yeah, it, was. it was a VHS <laughs> and we watched Darren Mullane's video video highlights yeah. do you still do that what's going on there yeah no do, do, do you remember that yeah I do 100% I do the reason why I I started to do all those things was because of Darren Mullane like I used to go visit sick kids at the um, children's hospital um not only because Darren Lane did, but it made me feel good. And that's before that we always used to do that. So I was just doing it once a month, just going in there um, and giving stuff out. It just makes me feel good, giving back to the community. But Darren Lane, even though he was a bit of a thug on the field, not, I wouldn't say thug, he was a hard man and he never took a backward step. Back at, back in when he was playing in the early 90s, late 80s, that's thuggery was the name of the game. You know, you hit hard, you get your clop close lines and so forth. And Darren Lane, even though he was such a bad boy off the field, this tape that um, this tape that um, recognised that he, his lawyer told the courthouse that he used to once a month hire a minivan and go to um, a home, a nursing home or whatever, and grab a dozen people and take him take them to the football game, and then after his footy game he'd pick the van up take all the people back to the – or sick kids. I'm not too sure what it was, but yeah. it was – I can't really remember it um, vividly. But um, that was the reasoning behind – but no one – everyone saw this Darren Mullane as this hard man of AFL footy, but no one saw the soft side of him. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he didn't want any recognition. He didn't go tell everyone. And, and that's what I didn't tell anyone about Princess Margaret Hospital. And now it's become a, a big thing with West Coast. We we go around and to, to the sick uh, sick kids and, and give back and, and all. But that all kind of started um, – Back then, yeah. First couple of years, 97, 98, you're rising star nominee, those two. So you're going nicely. You're playing with, uh, I'm guessing, um, guys that have been through 92, 94 and the back end. Wusha retires in 98, yep. end of 98. Uh, Glenn Jakovic still running around. He's still running, yeah. Gosh, McIntosh. Guy, what's, what's, what's your memories of those guys? Because they were really senior figures then. You're, yeah. you're just a kid. Yep, yep. Now, it was, I was very lucky to, to be able to get drafted at 96 and be smack bang. Um, well, I, I'm in the middle of the the Judd Kerr kind of um, era, Coxie and 
you know, material, main wearing, mm. you know, it, it was, I, I was in a, a very lucky, it was, you know, semi-professional and then it become professional and then it can become really professional when I retired. But, you know, w when I first came to the footy club, Chad Morrison came up to me and goes, stick with Cuzzy um, and just stick behind this bloke, Ben Cousins. Didn't know much about him, but the way he went about his business, the, his work rate was, was enormous. And whenever we do a 2K time trial, 3K time trial, 1K, whatever, I, I'd, I'd stick behind him. And um, just little things to, to teach you. And I, I, I teach my kids these days now. And uh, I remember Dean Kemp, Tommy Kemp, one of the, one, him and Brett Hedy, Jobby, two of the funniest blokes you'll ever meet. But, but when, when I come to the footy club in December, November, December of 96, I was getting a tour around Subaco Oval and um, Jobby and Tommy, we call them, um, they come home, they come back from their, uh, from their like preseason run. Just, they're just doing it on their own. And, um, you know, introduced them and all that. And I, I become really close friends to both of those, um, those players. And then, so then obviously spend a bit of time with Jobby and Tommy and, and during the, uh, during training, Tommy would come up to me and goes, Brawny, when we do our warm up, run on the outside of the oval and not on the white line. He goes, because after a year, you probably run 10, 15 Ks more than the next person there. There's that little edge that, that you have over the person you're fighting for. And that just little things like that, um, that rem I, I remember um, from, and, I, and, and Dean Kemp, and, I, and I, even though he's one of the greats of West Coast in the game, but if he would have played in Collingwood or Essendon or Richmond, he'd be pretty much one of the greatest of all time. Superstar. That they yeah. just don't get the recognition <laughs> and Peter Matera, even though they, they've got recognition, Glenn Jakovic, you know, Maney. You know, they, we, we were, I was very, myself, Cuzzy, Wira, Chad and Gardy, that we, we were the ones that were very lucky to have long careers and still being a part of that 92, 94, because they, they're the ones that carved carved our future um, to where, where it is now. They, they, you know, they, those 92, 94 boys went through, they, was, they were getting taped on the back of a ute and had no change rooms, had no <laughs> money, you know, um, and they were, they were a, a gun side, gun side. Yeah. So what's that like for you as a young bloke coming in and seeing that, but also, you know, moving through the years and, and we know you end up playing in a premiership, but um, I guess trying to forge your own path with the group that you have because, you know, then Curry gets added to that, Juddy gets added to that, and Stinger comes over, he's mm -hmm. he's sort of added into it, Andrew Embley's around there at the same time as you. Yep. That that It's such a core group of guys that really built a, a long way through that period from like 98 through – Oh yeah. two, oh three, oh four. Wusher coming back as coach. Yep, yep. No, it, it was it, it was good. It was a it, it created a real um, competitive environment, but it, it was a happy competitive. You know, like we always wanted to be the best touch. You know, you, you know Tony McHale, um, you was, and uh, Rob Wiley. You know, we used to do the touch and stand around in an arc, and you know he used to boot balls at us. And we have a competition amongst ourselves who's got the best touch. And you go from king to dunce. And I do that now. I've introduced that to That's my boys now. It, it's it's yeah. it's it's fun. And when you create a fun environment, and everyone's you know, and Fletchy was there as well. We were all pushing each other. We were, and we. If we weren't so much off the rails, we should have won two or three premierships, to be honest. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is. And Sydney won one and we won one. And, and that, we were the two best sides. There's no doubt about that for those two or three years. But um, it would have been good to win win, um, win two, but I'm happy with one. Mick Malthouse as a coach? Yeah, I, I, I love him. And I I bumped into, I bump into, I haven't bumped into Mick for a long time, but I have bumped into him, you know, probably two or three years after I finished uh, football and, he was a father figure to me, like, and he he carved. Like, I've got a lot of respect for him. He 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 knew knew football, and he was very passionate about Cuzzy, and he was very passionate about the young kids. Like, Wira, he he was he really took Wira and Cuzzy right under his ring, and, and and Chad and I as well because we were Victorian, and there there was there was a real big talk about me, Fraser Gehrig and Chad Morrison leaving the footy club to go over east, um, and. I wanted to go and follow Mick when he when he left in '99 because of that because he was my coach so I, I didn't want him to leave because I'm I'm just building you know I I, I, I got um, beaten in the count back in in '99 which I'm filthy about Scowie no. <laughs> uh, no and uh, and and so then I I played every game that year in '99 and then I got struck patellar tendonitis so I went from 24 games to 12 games to seven to nine games to seven games in those three years and then my career was at the crossroads and I had signed a big contract after the 99 season you know Victorian that's what happened so 
Mick said he's going. I was, you know, the talk was, you know, there's nothing better than a Victorian um, having the rumours out there that he's leaving here. Cause, homesick. Yeah, homesick. Yeah, the old homesick, you know, I want to go home with my family. You're still going to be good enough to give you a contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, that, so, then, so that's what happened. So I got a good contract and I stayed. And uh, I stayed with West Coast, but my football and my injuries got severe. I, 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 my, I, my career derailed. And so that's when Judd Cousins come over and, and I'm on big money back then. And uh, I wouldn't say big money, I'll say good well, you money. Did, okay. And I was just like, well, can we, can we cut that out? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, and, and so they come to me and said, I oh, need a pay cut because I'm not delivering what I was, you know? So like, I'm, a, I'm only a 20, 21 year old kid, um, you know, starting out playing some good footy and, and, and finish well in the best and fairest and then just completely fell off the face of the earth, getting good money to, to do nothing. So I did, took a pay cut, did got you? Juddy and, and all that and uh, and then I had to rebuild my career at 2002. But that's the thing, that's why Judgy, um, may he rest in uh, peace, he, he he got given the job when his best 10 players were injured. You know, Guy McKenna was injured, I was injured, Dean Kemp was injured. Mm. We, we, it was an injury rabies. That's when we had that Orca ridiculous um, this one right here. Right yeah, here, mate. Yeah, yeah that's um, one of my favorites yeah should bring it back well it it, it didn't uh it didn't, didn't go any well favors <laughs> <your> <laughs> it was complexion yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> complexion as well as well i didn't really play in it as well because i was always injured i was always on the sidelines um so yeah 2000 2001 2002 i, I was pretty much um not around uh, on the footy field and then had to build my career in 2003, 2004. And, well, and that's when Wusher rocks back up the club. So he's he a ta teammate of yours. 2003, I think he rocked. Yeah, Did so he he's a teammate of yours. Yeah. You've played with him. Yeah. What's, what's that like, a teammate coming back to coach you? Because we spoke to Wusher here on the podcast and he said that was difficult for him. It, yeah, well, it was very difficult. Yes, I totally agree with him it, because I knew what he was like. I, we had some good – footy trips and, you know, and, and, and Wusher was good. And, and I've got a lot of respect for Wusher because when I think in my third game we, we played Carlton um, at Subaco Oval and it was a night game and I was given the job on Diesel Williams. Wow. And, yeah, and a huge job. And I've grown up watching Diesel you know, pretty much my whole life because obviously Collingwood Carlton. And um, I played on him and he disrespected me and spat at me and – Wusher and Jason Ball was playing at that stage, but Wusher is in the back pocket and he's come storming, like running so, so fast. But he saw Grab it. Yeah, yeah, so he saw everything because because I was getting because Diesel was a real tough, hard. You step on your uh, on on your toes. You'd, he'd elbow you in the chest. He just he was agrees like Gary Hocking was the same. Paul Kelly was. A, they were mean, you know, mean footballers, but yeah. they, they were tough. And I'm I'm an 18 year old kid. You know, um, so Wush has seen it. Wush has seen it. Ran up, grabbed Diesel by by the scruff, and just <laughs> threw him down. Oh, excuse me, and then just goes, "Don't you ever, ever touch him." And I'm just going, "How good's this?" <laughs> so Jason Ball just standing there, and I didn't have another problem. And then from that moment, I knew that Wush had my back, and that's what a good captain does. He he sees a young kid getting bullied or getting treated poorly. And he stuck up, and because Wusher was an enforcer as well. Wusher was the Durham Lane of Collingwood. Mm. He was exactly the same. He used to iron out blokes, but that's what you need in, in in football. You need your captain to back his players in, and that's what he did. So, getting back to that, he was quite ruthless with me when I first rocked. I said, "Look, you know, you've got to, you got to, you got to get better. You got to get, you know, back to where you were when you were 19, 20. Um, You know, I'm fucking trying, Wush. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't played much footy in the last couple of years. My, you know, my touch was off. And, and you see, you know, I used to do that thing with um, Stu, Mc, Stu McCormack yep. and the wing. That was because of, you know, I used to fumble and used to fall over and because my knees and all that, like, had a lot of issues about bending. And I still do. I still can't kneel on, on, a, on hard services. And so I worked extremely hard on my touch. And that's how we got that touch. You know, Rob Wiley used to come in on my day off and we used to just belt, a thousand footies at me just get my touch right and then 2003 started playing the back half of 2003 started playing some good footy i got dropped once or twice and that well that wasn't that wasn't nice it'll have never been dropped before but i was just off i was scared to to fall over and i wasn't my natural game was wasn't coming through i was nervous and when you're nervous and you know and i, I feel for all these players and they, they say i reckon um jack darling gets nervous and that's why he makes mistakes because everyone's on him all the time he doesn't want to make mistakes but he's thinking about not making mistakes and that's how you make mistakes and i've i, I feel for jack um and i've when i was you know working for the abc at 720 interview and I, I always make sure i 
get it out there say hey we're all behind you don't worry about you know the what people think just you know, you're gonna play your game and that's what i got back you know um tim jepp used to say to me and, and you know um snuffy um you know all, all these you know serge miller all these old school footballers used to always care about where you are in footy and that's what the footy club's built around um and then obviously got going in 2003 and away i went again so did, did wish um did you have to like adjust the way that you sort of communicated with Wisher, like because he was all of a sudden he was your coach? Or? No, not not really. I, I find it I find it difficult to talk to Wisher because he's a, a complete introvert. Like he, you could be sitting at the table like this and he won't say anything for twenty seconds, which which seems like a lifetime. <laughs> you say something stupid, you go, "What do I say that for?" You know. But he, he he got me back to he 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 got me back tagging again to instead of don't try and make play, go and play all these plays. But I'm not a back pocket player and all that. I'm a I'm a runner. You know, I'm playing against Brent Harvey. I used to kick goals on me all the time. I said, that's not doing anything for my confidence, Bush. I can't go down there, you know, like, because he was my, you know, they're my sort of kind of player, but not in the back pocket. Give me up on the wing, I'll get him all day. But then he just took me straight down forward and said, you can't do that, Bush. You've got to have someone else take him there and let me stay up here. And and then, um, you know, away we went. So. There was a, I never saw it, but there was always a story going around about Wusher and you um, pre, pre-game um, at one stage in your career, had nice long hair. Uh, might have been wearing a headband. That was at training, yes, so, at training. What, hap- what happened yeah. there? I, I was well before my time here, uh, Scully. <laughs> I, I, I grew the, I grew my hair, hair out. Um, I think oh, luscious. Oh, oh, five, and it was, um, you know, Osher, um, Osher G- 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 or... G- Gunsberg. Well, his, his name was Andrew G back in the day. Andy G. And yeah. I used to love his hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I said, you know what, well, I'm going to go for this. So I, I kind of grew it a little bit longer and all that. And I had the, we had the mud flaps. He had a, a dark, I had a few tips in the hair. But, yep. And I said, we, and my hairdresser I've been going to for 25 years. And they dyed it under here, the bit, bit long down here. And so I, I wore a kind of headband, like a metal one, a zigzag one. A manly one, not a girl one. Right, so not a sweatband, like a, no, no, like a full on, yeah, like a, right. like one of the girls, a like clasp kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, Great. and and so I've rocked up the training, and and I I'm always I said I'm old, old school. I always stand front and center when the coach is speaking because, and I tell my boys, then he knows you're around. Okay, then first mind of thought. Okay, let's go pick Brawny, blah blah. Just a bit of a, another trick that I've been taught along the way. And he goes, "What are you doing? I'm fucking looking around. Are you talking to me?" Yeah, what the fuck's in your hair, you know? Like, <laughs> nothing's in my hair. And he's come and grabbed it and he's grabbed half my hair with it, pulled it out and just ripped it up. And he said, oh, so you don't like that, I suppose, wouldn't you? <laughs> and this is in front of all the boys. This is like, he's called us all in. And he, and, and uh, he's just done that. But now, I, I, this is the thing that shits me is that everyone's wearing beanies and all that kind of a trainer. Here I'm just trying to get the hair out of my face. We've got all top knots and, you know. And I can't have a little little uh, headband well before my time, mind you, before this um, moustache and beards and top knots and that were in, in fashion. I was, so we just snapped it in front of the group. Snapped it in, in front and threw it on the ground. And he goes, okay, now we've got rid of that. Let's fucking start training. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Uh, well told, mate. Now, um, what about derby memories? There are always you know, big rivalries throughout your time. Um, you played in the first loss to Freo, I think. Possibly, yeah. That's mate, you're going Absolutely. well, well back then. No, but, but, we were but derby memories. I mean, there were some brutal games you guys played against each yeah, other. Yeah, well, that, that demi- demolition derby was in 2000. I was injured that day, and um, funny enough, I was you know, my, um, my my ex wife Bree. Her her dad was a um, a member of Frio, and um, he got invited into the president's lunch for Frio that day, and he invited me in there. <laughs> Not only did I win the raffle in that photo, I've got all the Docker memorabilia. <laughs> I'm sitting in the in the in the members of Fremantle watching this big brawl go, and I'm just going, "Should I put the uh, the Frio beanie on now?" And I was just going, and the, when when my name got called out, uh, I'm not even too sure who was hosting it back back then. Um, oh yeah, Michael Braun a table such and such. I said, "Are you kidding me? I've won this um, this." This basket of so you're a like West Coast a, player in the Frio President's yeah, Lunch winning yeah, the I, raffle. Yeah, but, is, but it was because we were, I obviously had yeah, the yeah. good seats to watch the Derby. You know, you want to go watch it. Didn't know that was going to unfold. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a that was a bit of a highlight there. You, you won the Roscoe in 2007, uh, best on ground, most expensive medal I've ever won. Yes, <laughs> tell me about it. I was going to give you the quote, but tell yeah. me what happened. Yes. Um, well, this you is, played well. Clearly. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so 07, I think it was the first round, round three or something like that, I think it was, or early on in the in the season. And this is when Cuzzy and the footy club 
were under enormous pressure. You know, we just come back from from the premiership, 06, had the footy trip. There was lots of rumours and innuendo getting flown around about certain players and, and, and our behaviour off the field and on the field or whatever. And um, it, it, the club was under enormous pressure and under scrutiny. And we always, you know, we always cop the brunt of it, you know, whether it's called for, probably. Um, but, you know, we're all human, all having, you know, trying to trying to get through and, we're playing the derby and, 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 it's, and, it's, and it's heated. It, it is, it is, it's the biggest game outside of finals footy because we, we don't want to lose. And any sportsman don't want to lose. That's why you play a sport for us to compete. Yeah. And unfortunately, there's winners and losers. You know, so I've, I've won the medal and we, and I don't kind of get recognised. You know, obviously there's, there's other biggest stars in the footy side and I've got called out and I was a bit shocked because you don't know how well you played. Uh, you, you know, you, until you get, you know, until you're in retrospect, until four or five hours later or, or, whatever. You, you, or whatever. You didn't have you didn't have that sort of information at, at your disposal back then. So you didn't know until the next day when your stats come out in the papers. Yeah. Um, and see, so these boys now you got champion data straight away. You can, you know, you know you'd be looking call, at a quarter time. Yeah, quarter time. The boys at the phones out. Oh, I've had that four or five touches. Like, <laughs> so I'm not the sort of guy that counts my possessions mid game because I'm I'm focusing on my job at hand anyway. So I've won the won the medal and I've thanked whoever I had to thank. And I've just looked over the boys and I'm still pumped. And I said, yeah, let's have a fucking good year, boys. You know, let's, let's get this going. Let's go for back to back. Let's, let's take it. We've knocked off these wankers. Let's, let's, let's move on, you know? And, and I didn't know I said it until I got back to the, back to the vet. And you can look it up on YouTube. I've gone back to Curry. He was one of my, one of my good mates. And he just goes, you just swore. And I, and I, and you could see us talking. I said, nah, no, I didn't. And then, Chicky come over and said, mate, you've just – and then Coxie come over, you've just sworn on national TV. <laughs> it was live, 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 L- live, live TV. Live TV. And, uh, and the next morning, back page, and I just got crucified. And the AFL – Which is ridiculous. It, yeah, the AFL, because of what we've been going through, the AFL thought I did that deliberately with a bit of a, you know, to the AFL. Right. And I said, I'm not that sort of person. And so the, the AFL come to the footy club, you've got to find Brawny. So the club fined me 750 bucks. Well, there was outrage with that, you know, $750, you know, whatever. So the club, so the AFL stepped in and goes, no, that's not good enough. And again, there was another, the, the, the AFL thought that the, the club weren't severe and all that. You know, you just see the Nathan Brown do that. Yes. He didn't even get more than, than what I, you know, like he's sticking, he was. So they've come over the top. Of come over the top and. and, and another 5K. Me. Yeah. So you, you got. got earned so earn 10 to get that five, mind you. <laughs> Brutal, <laughs> savage. That's overs. You won the oh, loss, going. And, and it was an it was an honest mistake. Because when I was talking, I was like this, talking to the group of players. I wasn't out there talking to the yeah, yeah, the, 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 the million people that were watching. But I, I, I must go off track here, um, Scott, because yeah. I have got a, a story uh, with Wush and I. Right. Now it's, it's my it's my best. It's my footy trips are very fun. You know, 06 was fantastic, obviously because of the premiership. But ninety eight Barcelona. It was my f- my Take best me. trip. Okay, take me to Barcelona. <laughs> I, I, I was I was nineteen, possibly twenty, and I was rooming with Jared Schofield at the time. And ninety seven, ninety eight, and I, I was really a stickler with um, my food intake, what I ate, oil, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know, Spain they had all the you know chorizo and whatever, all the um, paella, uh, yeah, yeah, all, all that kind of stuff. And so we're in. So, and it's and Sco was actually going to get traded to Port Adelaide at that stage, so it wasn't a, a good time for him. And Sco is one of my good mates. Me, Chad, and Sco we all, we all kind of grew up, or well, not grew up, but we kind of played footy and and, and we're, we're best mates. And I've sitting down there for lunch, and I've ordered a um, some soup, mm. and there's there's a dump of oil right in the middle of of my soup with some sour cream or whatever on it. And I, I refused, um, refused to eat it. I said, I'm not, there's oil in me. Like there's, a, there's a, like an oil slick in my, in my, so I just want some peen ham soup or whatever it is, take the oil out. Anyway, so. Send it back. Send it back. I'm not eating it. Holy I'd rather shit. get, and this was, this is like one o'clock. Cause everyone has a siesta and all that. So Wusha comes over and we're all in the hotel. So, so we're all going out. So this has started. This, this, this got me off into a bad start. This soup. And so we're, 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 we're <laughs> filthy on the <laughs> filthy soup. On the soup. And so we went out to a place called the Mari Magnum, right? So this it's not there anymore because I went back to Barcelona just recently a couple of years ago, and it's not there. It was right. It was like a Hillary's Boat Harbour, and it had all the nightclubs and a uh, horseshoe with mini golf in the middle, and it was a 
bar, bar, bar nightclub kind right. of thing. It was just sounds just, amazing. So it was it was awesome, and that was when we used to go out with the uh, the Bono. Um, sunglasses with the multicolored lenses and all that, and we had that was when the Red Bull and Vodka was like on, and we were, <laughs> we were on the podiums, and we were just and so you can imagine 25, 30 footballers just storming this one particular area. <laughs> we are just taking Storm. over this entire area. There'd be you know 15, 16 bars slash nightclubs with all open. You just go from bar to bar. Right. You get kicked out of one straight across the other side. Playing mini golf, the balls going everywhere. <laughs> mini golf. Anyway, so Scoey and I were on the on the podiums, and we're you know we're doing all this kind of stuff, and so I go to the toilet, and I saw this leather jacket on the the um, hand dryer, right? Yes. So I thought I'll take that. <laughs> Don't know why I did, but I took it, and I've go back to the bar, and Wush is at the bar. Wush, got a jacket for you, mate. And he's thanks, but no worries. So this, we're not even sure what time it was late. And um, he puts it on, right? Comes up, comes up to hear on him, and, and all of a sudden, get a tap on the shoulder. And I look around, and there's about ten blokes behind it. That's his jacket, right? <laughs> and Callum Chambers is with me at this stage as well. And I, I said to Woosh, I, I was I was backpedaling hard at this stage. I said. Uh, I didn't tell him anything. I, I just I said, "Whoosh!" I, I think that that might be their jacket. No, no, not. And and this we're talking. These boys were were on. They were they were going to go at us. And there's blokes in the back there, and they're going <laughs> they're kill like you. this. And Carol's going, "What is going on?" I've caused this drama, and and Whoosh refuses to even talk to him, acknowledge him. <laughs> This is my jacket. I'm wearing it. You are not having it back. <laughs> you know, and so this is the wild man that Wush was. You know, yeah. this is '98. So this, I reckon, he must have retired. He didn't play. I reckon that was must have been his last yeah. last year '98. Anyway, this went on for three or four minutes, and it felt like a long, long time. And they were getting more and more aggressive. But Wusher was adamant he wasn't taking this jacket off. <laughs> so you know the the, the 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 Spanish, they're quite slim people, and Wusher's this. So that's why you know he couldn't even get it on his on his body. Right. He was a refu- next was, yeah. next minute. I've just copped the biggest brunt on the back, right? I've got – someone's got me from the back, got my arm up and then an arm behind my back and I'm now my face is on the bar. I'm going, what is – I'm trying to see if – who's got me and I'm seeing if A wishes in the same position because if I'm getting done, I'm gone. Like I'm you know, 20. I'm going to get – Logged here. I'm trying to look around, trying to force my way around to see if Woosh is in the same position. Anyway, I see Woosh in the same position. I was like, that made me feel a little bit better because I knew that he would, we, we read a smoky chance to kind of get out of it. And he was just fighting so hard. And But the bloke, but it was security. There, were, there was about 10 security guards and these blokes here just going off. Anyway, so I'm walking down the hallways. And I'm trying to still see if Wush is following me because I don't want to be going into this room by myself because, <laughs> A, I can't speak Spanish and I've got no identification on me. I'm in all sorts of drama here. And so we've <laughs> Wush is behind. So I'm sitting here like we are now. I, I'm, I'm cool, calm. A couple of minutes later, obviously, they've taken the time to get Wusher because he's probably just going off his <laughs> trying to get him through these doors. Fighting the whole bar. But we're in this, it was like a sec- secured, secured area, but you could see out, but you couldn't see in. So oh, we didn't even know this was probably just a it was just wind glass going from there, but this is a holding place where all the security because you can't because all these um, pubs and all that are all open, so there's no like line. You just it's just like an open, yeah. you know. Whoosh has come in and he has gone bananas, still in his jacket, right? He is still refusing and he's throwing his arms up. He is flipping tables. He is kicking chairs, and I'm I'm going. Fucking this bloke is gonna lose his shit at me when he knows that I've caused all this. I'm like, I am fretting because he's my captain. I'm 20 years of age. We are now in the police, security, whatever it is, and he is absolutely still livid that this jacket is his. Anyway, so this all comes back, and the police calm, the security calm, because they they can't speak English as well. So we are trying to communicate. We're sitting in here for the best part of an hour. The owner of the jacket now is in the room <laughs> and this is not going well. So I've come clean to Woosh and said, Woosh, that's not your jacket. That's not my jacket. That's this guy's jacket. I don't give a fuck whose jacket it is. <laughs> He's not getting it back. 
You know, <laughs> and Wusha, we're in trouble now. We are now with the police. Okay, we are stealing property that's not ours. He wasn't. He wasn't. <laughs> didn't care. Anyway, so we've had a mediation, and what, <laughs> this is a nightclub of mediation. We've had a mediation. So he's taken the jacket off. Right, let's just all come to do it, and we're all settled. So, okay, we're all friends now. He gets the jacket off him, and the bloke comes over to to get it. And he grabs a jacket and just goes whack and pushes this bloke four or five meters partless. That was uncalled for, dude. Like, he's got mates out there that, and by this stage, like there's not a group of us that are like 15, 20 of us. There could be three or four of us. Still not enough to handle ourselves, you know. So we've gone back. This is all kind of mellowed out. We've gone back into the place. The blokes have come back to us because well, this is all forgotten. They've gone. This is all, we're all back now. Dan, tap on the shoulder again. I've turned around. It's the same bloke. He wants me to buy him a drink <laughs> I, and to, to, to say sorry and all that. And Wusha is gone. He's not, he's, Wusha's, I don't know where Wusha is now. I'm just back with Scoey on wow. the dance floor, you know. I've bought him a drink and, and like the the rest is, I, I don't know what's happened, but he had, like Callum Chambers, he, he was frightened for his life because he was even younger than me. And he these blokes were all doing these karate cranes, like, you are gone, mate. And and, and it was like, Wusha tells a different story. He told it at my 200th um, dinner. You know, and uh, so, yeah, that's a – That's unreal. It was, it, was a, it, was a um, it was a good um It was a good ending to a uh, – no one got hurt. He got his jacket back and it was all happy days. This is my so. fucking jacket. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Um Let's uh, let's bring it back to footy there, mate. Um, in the grand final years, so 05, playing a grand final, um, you don't play, West Coast does. You hurt your knee in the prelim. Yep, prelim, yep. What's that like to watch on? They're pretty banged up at the end of that year, 2005, West Coast as a whole. Yeah, yeah, no, we were. And um, it was, yeah, I got injured in the first 30 seconds of the prelim final. And I'm blaming Travis Gasper on this because, no, not seriously, but Travis Gasper um, gave away a free kick before the bounce had even like before the game had started, there was a there was a he was playing centre half back against Adelaide, and a scuffle has broken out pre-game. Obviously, because we're everyone's up and about. It's a prelim final, um, and the ball got directly straight to the centre half forward, who went and kicked the goal. So the the the, the nothing started. They've kicked the goal. We're back in our positions again. I'm on the wing. The ball goes up, and the ball spills out to me. I've come running in from the from the wing, went to kick. A moving ball, which Mick Malthouse told me, never ever kick a moving ball like without touching like that. Brett Hetty did twelve weeks for it. You know, it, it's it something that's happened to Chef. It happened to Chef. Yeah, and it, it's it's dangerous, and we've seen it. And I did it, and I've the first thirty seconds, and I went to kick it because we've come running, and we were all pumped, and I've torn the bicep femoris tendon from the bone, but we didn't know that until Wednesday. <clears throat> this is Saturday, and um, yeah, so I got um, got taken off. I could run or I could jog. I couldn't go any farther, faster than a jog, like a slow jog. I could walk, no drums, and you couldn't even know nothing's wrong with me. Jog, and then I get that all bang. Something's something's not right. It's not like like um, like an ACL and all that. It's it's a it's a it's a tendon, so I can still kind of move and just walk around as if nothing's going on. And anyway, we we jabbed it. This is at quarter time. Went down the rooms, spent because we're trying to figure out what's going on. No one's. This is the first. This is the second injury in the, f- in the last twenty five years that this ever happened, um, of the bicep femoris tendon um, being detached from the bone. You had see like um, Revolt and um, um, Maddie Lloyd. They did it at the top of their at the top of their hamstring. Mine did it at the attachment of the knee. Mm. So that's it's never happened because it's the strongest around the knees. But I've blown it out. Anyway, so we we jabbed it. And I thought, oh, this is cool. So I'm running up and down the cor- corridors of Subaco Oval. I'm I'm back. I'm playing here, not knowing that I'm running on my ankle because they've obviously hit a nerve, and I've caught what's called a foot drop. So anything from knee down, I can't feel. So even though I'm running, I'm not even running flat footed because I'm not. I'm not. You know. You know. Watch when you run. So I'm coming up at Subaco Oval up the race, and I'm I've run up jogging past, and I've fallen over. The fuck is going on here? I, I don't fall over running like that. And didn't I say? And so the, the physio picked me up. He goes, Are you all right? I said, Yeah, I fucking must have tripped. You know, because we're all running out, you know, it's foot, feet everywhere. You know, sometimes it does happen. You trip and yeah. you know, bank fall over, but you always, you know, you're tight. And I'm running up the um, up the wing 
to get out of that, you know, to start the, start the game. And um, uh, Paul Tucker tapped me and said, mate, you've got to come off. I said, what are you talking about? So you got a foot drop. I, I didn't know. He, he was been watching me that I'd been running on my side of my foot on my ankle and I could have been doing all, all sorts of damage. He said, you, you're done. You've got to come off. Your, your, your game's over. I said, oh, fair enough. And then so it take, took us two or three days to figure out what had we had done. And, um, you know, you think that I've been playing footy since I was five years of age. First 30 seconds of the prelim final – and we win. I went. I'm in the grand final, and I and I played every game that year, and I miss out on the biggest game of my life. Mm. So that's you know um, depressive in itself. And um, did it drive you for the next year though? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Because you watched the boys lose that year. <laughs> yeah. I, so um, they're, they're very good. Like I wish it was very very good about that. He goes, look, you're, you know, I'm a senior player. You know, I've, I've played over 150 games at this stage, and. Um, life member of the footy club, you, we're going to treat you with some respect. You can come over with the boys um, flying because usually everyone else fly over the later fly. I, f- I flew, flew with the boys, was in the coach's box, you know, and that was an experience but it was it was bittersweet because – You were in you the know, coach's box at the grand final. Yeah. What was yeah. that like? Oh, Not many people have done that. It was intense. It was really – I, 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 I'd, I'd enjoyed it for the for the, the intensity of it but like – I was like, oh shit, you know, we're losing, and if they win, I'm not a part of it. So I, I was all over the place, you know, like mm. deep down, I I didn't want the boys to win, but I wanted the boys to win, you know, because I, yeah. I, I, I have, this is, I was a big contributor to the footy club at that stage, and I, I deserve to be out there, but you know, and I'm sitting there going, if they win, I'm not going to be part of it, you know, how unlucky is they? If they lose, I'm in the coach's box, you know, that you know, I should be out there, it's, you know, I, I could contribute and help them win, and it was a real, real surreal kind of um, situation and um, and then Wusha goes and I had my operation and I had to be in a brace for 14 weeks. We're talking hip to ankle Ooh. for 23 hours and 55 minutes of the day. I, I wasn't allowed to take it off unless I had a shower straight back on. I did that and then I was in a, um, uh, a high altitude tent, one of the very few plays to get in. That's why, you know, they used to go over to Colorado where the altitude's high. So what, what that is all about. So I, I was in an altitude tent for three months 12 weeks and we, we're about 22% oxygen here and this altitude tent brings it down. So the harder your body works cr- to create red blood cells to enable to carry white blood cells to carry the oxygen. So because I was coming from a way, far way, uh, a, a, a long way back, I didn't start running until kind of February. So I had it in September, October, November. So I've had Four months off complete rest. Haven't done a thing except for drink Coronas and watch The Sopranos. So that's all I did. <laughs> well, I, I'm talking every. I don't drink Coronas because of that reason. I am so sick of Coronas because I drank them every. Because I was like, uh, my off season was I was I was depilated. De, 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 um, de, yeah, depilated. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> I couldn't even because I was on crutches. I couldn't even get the milk out of the fridge in my bowl. I could not get anything. I was. I had to get um, people to come here and check up on me at lunchtime, bring my food because I couldn't get around. I was stuck uh, in my own home for, for pretty much three months. And um, we, uh, yeah, in, in, a, in an oxygen tent and I was had to measure when the oxygen levels would come down and all that. Um, but I kind of doctored it a little bit. I, I went because I'm OCD. I said, fuck this. I'm not good because you have to go like say 22%, um, 218 21.6, like But I just went straight to 17, bang, straight down. But I would – put what they wanted me to put but I'm doing my own thing because I, I wanted to get I need to get back out there because when I come pre-season I'm, I'm four months behind yeah. I can't you know and I'm a you know handy runner so I can't keep up with the Judd Cousins Kerrs they're all elite runners and I'm usually in that pack so I can't just come from there straight in there so I've had to work extremely hard to get my body right in that time and so I had to take my entire bedroom out Put this tent up in like as big as this area. I here. remember this tent. I remember yeah, being at big, the club. It's like uh, the tents were eighty yeah. grand, and that was that was the that was the new technology back then. They've probably done. They've got so much more in there, but back in that was so there was a. I had a pump going twenty four hours a day, and they'd suck the air out. And, and so when I'm sleeping, my body's working hard to create these red blood cells to get oxygen in my body and all that. Worst thing for when you go out on on the piss because we get that. That's when you go to oxygen. Massive headache. Huge. Right. I was, I was on, it didn't stop me because I couldn't turn it off. I had to do it every day for three months. So that was when Bree used to um, sleep in there as well. And, you know, so I was like the bubble boy from Seinfeld, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was seriously the bubble boy. And and so I, I, I got down to about 13% and, and I was working extremely hard. And, and then 
got back and I played the very first preseason game and never missed the game. Hmm. And that's when Jason Ackermanis accused me from using performance enhancing drugs because of the um, the OCD or the anal that I was about doing it over and above to, yeah. to get myself right. So I wasn't sure if you wanted to talk about that, but but on that, yeah, so I opened it up. So, yeah, well, no, <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's okay. I've got well, like Jason, I, I'll just read it out. You can speak about it how you, however you like. But Jason Ackermanis was wrong, wrongly accused Braun of being a br- drug cheat. Asada cleared Braun of all wrongdoing. Braun was awarded damages and apologies by the Seven and Fairfax Radio Networks. Ackermanis apologised, saying he was envious that Braun could run harder than him. And that was around this time, right? Yeah, and So yeah. without prompting you, I mean, yep. we've kind of seen how you got back. So that, that, that's that, that's what happened. And uh, and I got accused after the derby and that, that, that infuriated me even more because this was all coming out. But see, because... Uh, Adam Selwood's got obviously brothers and uh, Troy was playing for the Brisbane Lions at that stage and Ackermanis had already had his doubts that someone inside West Coast were using performance enhancing drugs, EPO. That's the the, the blood booster to carry the oxygen in your body. That's what the, um, you know, Lance Armstrong and all the um, Tour de France cyclists use. Um, and it gives you the, the edge, you know, it's, um, you know, very good performance enhancing drugs. Mm. <laughs> but... Um, so I have finished the derby and Gary Stocks, our communication manager at the time, come up to me and goes, um, Brawny, you're in a world of hurt here. Not, you know, there, there is a, a shitstorm of media coming your way that uh, you have now been out in the open being accused of performance enhancing drugs. So this has, had been brewing whilst I was playing and I've come off the ground, they grabbed me straight away um, and then there was media everywhere because this is like – this is huge, like performance enhancing, like, you know, you have recreational or, or whatever, that, that, uh, you know, that people are doing, but these performance enhancing is huge. Cheating. Not, no, no one, yeah, cheating, exactly yeah. right. You, you are now a drug cheat. And that did not sit well with me at all. So we had to get ahead. So I was just, you know, furiating from, from playing footy. And so I had to, you know, I've, I've had lawyers and um, media and um, my manager and all trying to get in, get ahead of this game because they're going to, because they're all waiting for me out the front of Subaco Oval. Um, and I'm not equipped for this at the moment. I'm the, not even in the headspace to even answer these questions. And I haven't got a script. I haven't got, you know, pre, pre-warned and all that. This is just, this is on the run. And um, so I've had to get out through the media and all that. It was all, it was all happening and I just had to refuse all the questions. Because you, you say one thing and they're going to go bang and they're going to mm-hmm. write that story. <laughs> and... Anyway, so went on to – this is all interconnected. So then I went on to the footy show um, with Craig Hutchinson um, to, to tell my side of the story on the footy show. Because uh, that's – that's we had to get it out to the biggest audience because – Well, that was footy, the footy show back then. Yeah, it was, was, was huge. Yeah. So you, you had to – I had to get as many people to see – to hear this straight away. Um, and we had a big one. He flew over. That's how important it was. He flew over face-to-face. That they, they put it all on. And told my story about, you know, my football journey about, you know, how I used to kind of, you know, from Echuca to catch a bus to training and blah, blah. I had to work hard to get to where I am. So I, my my ability to run hard has got to do with my mental mental capacity to push through pain and et cetera, et cetera. The 06 grand final premiership. Yep. Um, we might finish on that, mate. What's 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 that? What's that? Memories? Well, it's um, it's what everyone plays for, isn't it? Mm. Um, as, a, as a young kid... Um, lucky enough to have a, have a dream that I've actually been able to, to live out. And, uh, yeah, the 06, we got, we got some memories and, um, you know, it was, it was great memories. You know, that that's, you, you play football, you can have all the individual accolades, but you play with 23 of your mates. Um, and, 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 and I, I feel sorry for the players that, that weren't a part of it, but they, they got their chance, um, you know, 10 years later. Um, and it's, it, it, it is. There's not much really you can say. It's, it, it is the the pinnacle of of Australian sport, um, playing amongst you know your best mates in front of hundred thousand people uh, on the G as a Victorian, um, as a as a young kid growing up watching all these people be successful, and not only did I miss out no five, but you know um, I was lucky enough to be able to get back and play every game and win and win the um, win the premiership. Do you remember when the siren went? Yeah, hundred percent. Yep, I've got I've got the photo. Curry, Curry and I um, were together. We we're at the um, in the back pocket of the Swans. You know, obviously it was a ball up. I'll oh, bound you throw in a ball up. I can't remember which one it was, but there, I've got a photo of Curry and I arm in arm, Coxie with his two hands up, 
um, and that sits proudly um, on my wall, that that particular photo. And I th I was envious of the, the 2018 side. They I, I didn't quite take it all in that one lap of – I've got a couple of photos of, but I can't really remember what I did because mm. it was all so much. It was yeah. all, but um, I I made sure I made sure that I was front and center in that the, the cup there. But I I was thinking about that because obviously being a a footy not a footy nut, but I I, I love footy nuffy. Footy nuffy. Yeah, footy nuffy. Yeah, you can call me that. I, I love football, so I look at all these. You know, when the Herald Sun comes out and the the, the blokes there, and um, I, I've got a beautiful big um. A photo of me sitting in the middle of all the boys. So you're right in the middle. Yeah, there. with the cup as well, because the, the cup was up there. And I don't know how I got it down there, but it's down on my um, in between my um, in between my legs, and it's a it sits um, front and center of everything. We love so it. So good. Mm. Um, I think that's enough from Dan and I. I got one more. Um, okay. Oh, one more. Okay. Uh, the midfield. Yep. Like the that West Coast midfield talked about one of the you know, potentially one of the greatest ever. Did you at the time realize what you guys had, or was it just like, oh, we're a good side? No, we we we, we weren't arrogant, and there's a there's a fine line between arrogance and confidence. And we in that oh five oh six seasons, we would we would go up that race just knowing we're going to win. Like we 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 just know we just got to just got to do what we do. And that the midfield was was fantastic, but the midfield still had. Another six players ahead of that, you know. We we had, um, you know, Butsy Butsy was coming through there. You know, Tyson Stengel, um, Adam um, Selwood. Um, you know, then you, you know Fletcher was still part of it. Ember's on the wing. I'm on the wing. You know, Coxie. You know, CB to an extent. You know, but Jordan Cousins and Kerr were were great players, no doubt about that. But they but they were even better when they had Stinger and, and Sellers and, and and Rowan Jones. Like you know. Juddy to this day always says that the first person he'd pick in, in that final would be Rowan Jones. Yeah, and we all know that Rowan Jones wasn't the most skillful, but you know what he did have? He had the biggest heart and and he was mentally tough. And he would do, he would sacrifice himself. You know, those three players, they were they were the, the stoppers so Judd, Cousins, and Kirk could run forward because they had the players on the way back. You know, even me to an extent, I, I was always running back um, and to help that help out that but that's that's your role that that that, that doesn't matter how small or how big that role was you play your role and we win and, and that's it we and, and there was a real it's a, a really good feeling when you can go up a race go out into that that field and have those screaming fans knowing that you are the best side and you you may you may not be winning at half time or three quarters but you just know that you're intensity because that's what that was good about it, is the fact is that when judd come off cousins went on when kerr come off fletchy went on when I went off on the wing, uh, Embers came on or Butsy came on. Like we had the intensity level to stay at that work rate because we had nine players running through that they could take that. So when those good players come off, another good player came on, and that's what Sydney and all those boys couldn't or the AFL couldn't compact because you may have two or three good players, but they can't rotate like we did. We we had them coming through; they they just couldn't keep up. You tag Cousins and Judd and Kerr, Embers, Fletchy, me pop up. You, you you tag Kerr and Embers and me and Fletchy would pop up. You, you can't contain five six plays. You contain two, not five or six of them. So, so, so I'm for social media, not social social. That's right, Brody. I need <laughs> like that. Hayden Ratcliffe kicks us off. Daniel, uh, who wins 2006 or 2018 West Coast Grand Final teams? I, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, 06. Why? I just think <laughs> no, no I, I, I just think that the, I just think the midfield. I, I think the midfield. Our forward line, you know, even though Lynchy and, and Ash were, were very very good players. You're not be able to kick goals, mate. Hey, you're not you're not going to be able to kick goals. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll create them though. No, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, imagine having big JK up there, you know, kicking. If he's on our team, yeah, no, yeah, but we'd, we'd shut him down with uh, Hunt or whoever else playing down. But who was playing down back? Glass, glass would nail him <laughs> any day. Of the week. But we, we have. I, I love having beers. Hey, this is especially where where he gets real passionate about this about ninety two, ninety four, because obviously we're very still good friends with David Hart and Chris Lewis and David Hines and. You know, and I love Wira's opinion about that, and uh, he still thinks the 06 is the, the better out of the four. And they dig, they dig up, don't they? Oh, they dig up hard. Eighteen <laughs> boys, eighteen boys. We're still a bit new to the whole yeah, thing, yeah, and we're yeah. sort of we we put in a bit of a shit talk, but we're like. 92, no. 94, and 06, like head to head, like yeah, people but, start wrestling. But I, I, I think 92 was the best team. That's I, what Wusha said. Yeah, I, I, and it's because it was their first one. Yeah, but you asked David Hart, and 94 was because he didn't miss, he didn't play 92. <laughs> um, but and, and so the good thing is we all meet uh, for Mania. 
is the thing that um, the 92, 94 people do. Um, um, is it Caulfield Cup Day? I think it is. Yeah. Um, the, the, all the premier, premiership sides meet at, uh, at Ascot and we have a, a big race day. And we've, uh, I went there for the very first time last and had a ball. So I can't wait for Caulfield Cup this year. Good. We've got a horse racing that day. All oh, right. The I, I, is, is, are we going to tell little, let everyone know that no, we're going to no, back it? We're going to back it. Yeah. And you both going to watch us win. <laughs> yeah, um, nice. The Jay Jason. Uh, what did Mulhouse say, Mulhouse say to the boys during. And after the ninety nine qualifying final v Bulldogs. Well, that's going, but that was um, that was my fiftieth game that day. Um, what did Malthouse say to the boys during and after? The was that dur- was that the final? huge comeback? Uh, no, that was no. that was during the year. That that was when that was when they, they kicked ten goals one way and ten goals the other way. Ninety nine qualifying qual- qual- final. Qual- qualifying final. The that was right. um, Friday night. I reckon it was because right. it was Scotty Cummings' hundredth game and my fiftieth game. Um, I, I can't. I can't remember. That was when he was in the coach's box when his arm on that wasn't it? When we we just got over the line was that? Oh. I think that was it. He was. It was in the. He was going off his brain because that was an elimination final. I reckon it was. Right. It was elimination final Friday night at the Bulldogs and. Um, yeah, so I, I've got um, – yeah, some. I, I, I can't really remember what he actually said, but I remember this vision of him in the box just storming around and then the siren went and he had his hand on his – he had his head on his arm on the glass. But um can't really remember, but it was – you know, th- th- we knew that was his last year. That was why because he was going to Collingwood in 2000. Right. Instagram? I don't know what uh, – How many times have you walked up and down West Coast Highway? I walk over it pretty much every day. Do you? I, I, I walk baby Boston there now. So I've got a, I've got a young boy, um, Boston. He's he's like nearly nine months, I think. Because I can't run these days. I, I can, but I choose not to because my knees are wrecked. So I use walking up and down the coast with Boston um, as my um, fitness these days. Liam Hargraves. Ask him about the grey area. Yeah, the grey area of pain. That is the, a Darren Mullane, <laughs> um That's a Darren Mullane thing. So um, – I can't remember his first name, but someone Giles, um, he's a, he was a boxing coach at uh, at uh, Collingwood, and he was one of the most feared trainers. He was hard, and Darren Mullane always used to want to train in the grey area, which is the pain. So um, he'd always want to train with such intensity. So when he gets to the the, the time when he's tired, he can go that that uh, go again, and they call that the grey area. So when he when he gets that in a game. He's been there. He knows how to deal with it, and he can and he can push through that. And that's the grey area that I that that's why I and that's detriment to my my body now. I used to train at 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 high levels all the time. So when in games, at the twenty minute mark of the of of any quarter, I could I could run just as good as I could in the first five minutes. And that was the, that's the grey area where um you know where where opponents where I used to used to grind them down and used to get away from them and get my touches in the last five, eight minutes of the game. DX Ham, 308. Uh, reason behind the glove. You used to love the glove. Yeah, used to love the glove. Yeah, it's uh, – I the glove was because I had a, a fracture in my uh, forefinger here uh, and because I'm a I'm – a, I, I bounce the ball right and handball left. Um, and Why? Oh, it's just the way I, – I, the, 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 no, sorry. But no, but I bounce the ball left, kick right. So the reason why I, I, I do that and ha- I handball left, so I'm a left handballer. When I was growing up and I was 15 years of age, um, the full forward, because I, I was playing senior footy for, for a Chuka, um, the full forward at that stage goes, you need to be able to kick left and right feet. Um, and I said, okay, how do I do that? He goes, well, when you do your lap, warm-up lap, you bounce left hand. So I was, you know, again, anal, OCD. I, all I did, I didn't bounce right anymore. I just practiced left doing that because I was training with the seniors at 15. I, I, I played senior footy um, and that was how I become um, a left um, hand, uh, left bouncer and been able to kick left foot um, quite competently. And, and so so, so the, the glove, I had a, a protective film underneath the glove. So then because when I was playing 98, Gary Hocking and all these boys, they see something on your hand and they'd hit it all the time. So I had to had to cover it up. So if I if they see any bandage, they'd press it, they squeeze it, they hit it. So those dirty tactics back then, they, that's what it was just to cover the, the injury. Adrian Smith? Uh, no. No. Eggman? Uh, how do you like your eggs cooked? Scrambled. Good. Yeah, I'm a scrambled egg. And I, you know, I don't go out for breakfast because I'm not paying a hundred bucks to to cook scrambled eggs right. and bacon that so I can. The first that story that he told, yeah. Yeah. he said the boys used to say he was a tight ass. They are a fucking tight ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> mate, man. that's us done. Dustin, yeah. you have fun. No worries, mate. Thanks very much. I'm sorry I was taking so long, but uh, yeah, it's a good fun. It's been it's good, good chats. Good time. Backchat yeah. double underscore on socials. Get us over there. A big thank you to our partners and our sponsors, Fleet Network, powering the podcast this year. 
Swimply, Whippersnapper Whiskey, Margaret River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co., Leadable Cameras, Mumba Digital, looking after our website as well. You can get all of that at backchatstudios.com.au. VIPs, hang around for one more story from Brawny. Thanks very much. Excellent.